NFTs have become massive in the crypto space. Some NFTs like this Bored Ape sold for an insane $3.4 million. Now, what exactly is an NFT? NFT stands for non-fungible token, meaning that every single one of them is unique and they can only be owned by one person. Now at its core, NFT is just proven ownership of some digital asset. So in the case of this board ape, you would own the original NFT file. Now I like, for example, the use case of tokenized real world assets. So for example, you could create an NFT of your car and then whoever owns the NFT would own the car in the real world. All right, so in this video, we're going to create on our own NFT. We're going to deploy it onto the blockchain, and then we're going to look at our NFT on the OpenSea marketplace for NFTs, and then we'll import it into our MetaMask wallet. NFTs are ERC721 compliant tokens. So an ERC721 token has got all of these functions that are set out by the standard. So it will have a balance of function where you'll put the owner ID or the owner address, and then it'll return how many tokens that individual has. Then we've got the owner of function, which you put in the token ID, and then it gives you the address that owns that token. So every single one of these tokens will have a corresponding metadata or file that represents the NFT and then the owner of the NFT. So this is the open Zeppelin information sheet. You guys can just give this a read through to see all the functions that are included in a, an ERC 721 compliant contract. All right. Then if you go also onto GitHub on the open Zeppelin page, you can go through to the ERC 721.soul file. This has got the solidity code for an ERC721 token. So you don't have to write all of this code yourself. You can just import this code into your project and then you can make adaptions and alterations to meet whatever specific requirements you have for the token. All right, so let's do a project breakdown quick. So first we have to create the NFT art. So I'm going to use Adobe Firefly. Adobe Firefly is a AI generative tool. So you can pretty much describe what you want the NFT to be or what you want the piece of art to be. And then it'll give you some options. If you are in this for the digital art purpose of it, then maybe you want to create your own by scratch. Um, this will give us an outcome like this image of Naruto, which is pixelated. Next, we'll create an NFT metadata file. So this is a JSON file. So in order for our NFT to be on the OpenSea marketplace, it'll need to have an associated name, description, and image. You can also add other attributes to it. So for example, the Board Ape Yacht Clubs has got rarity of certain background colors, of certain sunglasses, and that's all optional. Next, we'll upload the JSON file and the image onto an IPFS. Now, IPFS stands for Interplanetary File Storage. This is essentially a peer-to-peer -peer storage network so that the data is not stored in one centralized location. Now, this is a big misconception when it comes to NFTs and general data on the blockchain. It's too expensive to put the actual NFT onto the blockchain. So what we actually end up doing is storing the NFT on a for example, IPFS, which is a distributed storage uh, file storage system, and then we'll obtain a link to that image. Then that link will be what's inputted into the smart contract, and that's technically what you own. So you don't technically own the image, you own a link to the image. Next, we'll write the smart contract. So we're going to write it in Solidity and deploy it onto the Ethereum testnet. The outcome of this will be this Ethereum smart contract. Uh, we'll be using Remix, the online IDE for this. This already integrates or allows you to integrate your MetaMask and it connects to an Ethereum node so you can interact directly with the blockchain. We'll then deploy the URI to the smart contract. So this specific link to the image and the metadata, that'll be deployed onto Remix and then the outcome of that will be the 
NFT link, which is now on the blockchain. All right, so let's go ahead with step one and create the NFT art. If you go on to Chrome and then just go on to Adobe, then you can use the Adobe Firefly. This is actually a paid service, but I think you can do a trial period for free. So you can write a description of the sort of art that you want, and then it'll generate some outcomes. So let's say a pixelated dragon and see what it generates. All right, so here are actually really cool dragons. <laughs> um, okay, so you can pick the one that you want and then you can download it. I have actually already got my art. Um, I'm doing pixelated versions of Naruto, the anime characters. So we've got Naruto, Jiraiya, Itachi, and Sakura. All right, so that's step one done where we've created the NFT art. Next, we need to create the NFT metadata. So that's a JSON file. So I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. You can just go to File, New File, and then just type whatever you want it to be called and end it with .json. So let's say anime.json. And then you can just create the file. All right. So this is the storage layout that you need to put in there. And then you can just populate it with whatever information you want. So it needs to have the name, the description. The image is a URL link to the IPFS. So we'll do that in a second and then we'll populate this section. And then you can add whatever attributes you want. So in the case of Naruto, the strength is eight and specialty is Rasengan. All right, so next, so we've created the NFT metadata. Next, we have to upload the data onto the IPFS. So we're going to use Pinata. It's a free IPFS storage system. So you can just go onto the internet, go Pinata IPFS, and then you can create a profile. It is, uh, they have quite a few free options and I think it'll do for whatever requirements you have. So you can just log in. Once you log in, it'll bring you to this page like this, and then you can start uploading your information. So we're going to go ahead and upload the Naruto PNG. All right, so just give it a name. All right, perfect. So if you see here, this is part of the URI that will link to this image. So in the case of Pinata, you need to actually add that to this other piece of code. All right. So you need to add it to this HTTPS gateway.pinata cloud IPFS, and then you can just add that last little bit. Just move that across a bit. All right. So once you have this URL, you need to populate this into Studio Visual Code. So where the image is, you add it to the metadata, and that's done. All right, cool. So now we need to go ahead and upload this file onto the IPFS. All right, so go on to Pinata and upload the file. All right, cool. So now we've uploaded the image and the .json file. So step three is to, or step four actually, is to write the smart contract. So we're going to go on to Chrome and then we're going to open up Remix. So Remix, as I mentioned earlier, is an online development environment used for Solidity smart contracts. All right, so you can create a new file. Create, we'll make it a blank file and then we'll call it hidden leaf. All right. Next, we'll create a new file within this workspace. This just needs to end with dot soul so that it knows it's a solidity file. So we'll call this hidden leaf dot soul. Awesome. All right. 
let's proceed to write the code for this. All right, so the first line of code is SPDX license identifier MIT. This just says what license or permissions the document have. So open, I mean, MIT means that anyone can use it. Next, we have Pragma Solidity. This is defining the compiler version. So this version over here, so 0.8.25, needs to match whatever this Solidity compiler here is. So the latest one is 0.25. Cool. Then we're going to import two files, the ERC721 URI storage and the ownable.sol file. So the ERC721 is an extension of ERC721. So it's got all of the functions that we discussed earlier. And then it's also got an added functionality of the URI storage. So the link to the image, you, the function for that is also within this piece of code. And then the ownable.sol, this is just a modifier that allows you to restrict who is allowed to mint new tokens. So in this case, only owner, which is my account, will be allowed to mint new tokens. Next, we'll write contract leaf village is ERC721 URI storage and ownable. So we're defining our contract and then we're importing the functions from these two .sol files into our function. So we don't have to write the code ourselves. Now, the constructor, constructor is just a line of code that runs when you deploy the smart contract initially. So we need to input the name of the smart contract, which is hidden leaf village, and then a symbol for it. So we'll call it HLV. Next, we'll write the mint function. So this is to mint new tokens. So the inputs to the function will be two. So who are we minting the tokens to? The token ID. So which unique ID number is it going to have? And then the URI. So that's that URI link that we generated earlier. Then we'll mint a token. So we'll create the function to mint the token. It'll go to a certain account and then the unique token ID that you want to link to it. Then we'll have the set token ID. So for that specific token ID, we'll put in the URI link to the image of it. Uh, technically not the image actually, to the JSON file. All right, so we can save this. And then we can actually deploy this onto the blockchain. So compile the .sol file, and then we can deploy it. So under environments, you can either do it, uh, the remix virtual environment if you just want to play around a bit. We're going to go straight to injector provider, so MetaMask. And then we're going to use the Sepolia test net. I do have some test ETH here. I will put a link to a faucet. So then you can just click on the link and then put your um, your address in and then it will send you free test ETH. All right, let's deploy our smart contract. Uh, the MetaMask page will open up to accept whatever the transaction fees are. All right, cool. So the token was successfully deployed and then we can view it on Etherscan. Okay, so this is the transaction hash. This is the block that it was deployed to, the from account, which is my account. And then two is contract creation. It's still pending the transaction. So we can just give that a second. All right, so the two is now the new smart contract address. So if we click on that, It'll show us the address, and then the only transaction was the actual creation of the contract. All right, so now we have successfully written and deployed the smart contract. Next, we need to deploy the URI to the smart contract. So we actually need to mint the token. All right, so if we go to the IPFS again, we'll have the .json file link. Now, the .json file contains the image URI as well. So we're only going to upload the .json file onto the blockchain. So if you copy that and then incorporate it onto the end of this, all right, let's drag that across and take it off. So this will be the URI that we're going to input onto the smart contract. So let's go to Remix and then let's interact with our deployed contract down here. 
So if we go to mint artwork, we're just going to call the first one zero. And then the address two will be my address. All right, let's deploy it and check. Right, confirm the transaction. All right, so the transaction deployed successfully. We've got the transaction hash, the status, the block, the timestamp, and then we've got the account from and the account. All right, so now what we can do is actually go on to OpenSea and see if we can find our smart contract or our NFT set. So copy the smart contract address and then go on to OpenSea for test nets and then paste it in. And there we have it, hidden leaf village, one item inside. All right, there's our NFT. So if we click into it, we can see who currently owns it, so that's me. We can see the price history, the listings, the offers, the description, Pale Beast, and then details about it. So we can go ahead and do this for all of the images that we have, so the same process, and then we'll have our full set on OpenSea. You can also import the token into your MetaMask wallet. So if you go to MetaMask and then go to NFTs, then import NFT, Paste the address of the location and then put the token ID. So in our case, it's zero. And then if you own it, then it should import into your wallet, which it has. All right, awesome, guys. So that is how you create an NFT, deploy it onto the Ethereum blockchain, and then list it on OpenSea so that you can sell it.